Alright guys, welcome to another Ultronics video. Today we're working on this amplifier, this uh, Bosch Armour amplifier. Um, this states to be 4000 watts, um, AR4000D, Class D model block power amplifier uh, for cars. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's to run your woofer in your car. Um, this is sent to us, stating that it does not turn on. So um, there's a little bit of spec about what it is and what does it control. So it controls the car subwoofer, um, and uh, it's 4,000 watts. All right, so um, it got sent in to us, uh, stating that it does not turn on. So it stays in the protection light. So I think what that means is there's a light here. See that red light? So there's that, that light in there. It's red. It says that it stays on there. So um not sure what's... what's there you go. You can see that better. This is rolling around in there. So I think someone's opened this before. Because um, there's a lot of screws and stuff missing. Um, regardless, so let's let's plug some power in, and let's see what sort of light do we actually get. So what I'm doing is these. Oh wow! Look at this connection. Okay, so these that negative ground there, which is absolutely melted. There's your remote. Uh, which is your trigger from your head unit and then you've got your positive feed so this is just a bridge wire to turn this on um, when you apply 12 volts to this signal here so let's uh, that's quite concerning so that section is ab absolutely melted off um, I don't think the fuses are blown so before I do anything I'm just gonna continually test the fuses just to be sure it's not something very simple so these the fuses there um, so let's check that so that's working okay so the fuses seem to be good now let's uh, let's let's get some power onto this let's get some power onto this and uh, let's determine what's actually going on so get my power supply and just trying to show you guys what I'm going to do. Uh, so my negative, the negative lead will just go on top of that, just temporarily. And I'm just going to plug my positive lead here. See if that's going to hold on. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's not very good of a connection, but. Regardless, let's, let's just let's just see what it's going to do. So I've got 12 volt coming in, and all right. So let's have a look. Okay, so you see that red light. Okay, so it does not go to green. All right, so let's uh, let's figure out what's going on. So what I'm going to do is okay. This is. This is heating up quite a bit on the sides. Let's turn the power off. Let's remove my leads. Okay, so it was it was taking about about 1.35 amps. So let's uh, let's disassemble this. Okay, and then pull the motherboard out and let's begin with testing and let's see what the issue is. So I'll pause you. And then I'll disassemble all of this, take the board out, and then I'll position it here, and then I'll come back then. So be with me. Alright, here we are. So that's all loose now, all the screws removed. Um, I'm pretty sure these are supposed to be mounted against this to hold it together, but regardless, it's it's not on there. But um, let's let's remove this this board out of here. Got all this 
sticky glue on it. So let's let's get rid of this. We want this. Here we are. So okay. So now before before doing anything, um, and the one advice I'll give to people that are that are wanting to learn this sort of stuff is for you to before you even even start testing any of these components or anything use your eyes and use your nose um, visually inspect the board of anything that seems out of the ordinary so something that's burnt or something that's um, looking a bit funny something that's you know not feeling the best so what we're going to do is just just have a look visually around this board of any burn marks of anything that's smelling a bit funky looking a bit funky um, and then we will work our way around so these couple of these resistors are a bit crooked which I don't think that's not why it will, uh, it's not turning on but um, yeah so let's 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 have a look around and then flip this over. Okay. It's all this white thermal paste all over the place on this board. Okay, so this is just what is this? So this is just I think some sort of a glue. Um and uh, let's work our way around having a look at any burnt tracks just just to give us some direction on uh, which way to go what to test first and go from there so um, I can't see I can't see anything out of the ordinary but I am going to test this this massive um, this one right here this diode so I've got my multimeter Multimeter. and I'll just set it to the diode scale and I'm just gonna have a look at this see if there's any okay so that's that's okay so we'll go reverse polarity and then forward bias so it should it should give me some sort of a okay all right so that's that's fine because you've got capacitors you've got this coil in line you've got a um, couple of other things in line with it, so it'll, it'll give you that sort of reading. Um, okay, well that's all right. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so I think the next thing we will check is let's 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 just have a look here. Let's just. Let's just check the short between the positive and the negative rail. Okay, so okay, so that's okay. So that that tells me that this section here with this diode in line, it's not shorted. So that tells me that's fine because it's charging and that it's it's giving you a forward voltage drop as well as a uh, a back voltage drop. So. I reckon that's that's fine. So let's work our way around. Um, let's start testing some of these components. So if we follow, if, let's just say if we follow this positive rail, it goes through these caps, these filter caps. It goes around this section here. We'll go through this. We'll come out over here, and then that's a coil. And then the quail will take it across the section here. So let's uh, let's let's. I, I think I think this is this is your power section here. Uh, yeah, because you've got a couple of diodes in section there. Um, this is your thermistor, your temperature. Um, Okay, so 
because I, I don't I don't think that the problem is in this section here simply because if if you notice what it did it it gave power to this but the protection light was on yeah so it didn't blow the fuse so if you if you think about it logically if I was to plug power here positive and negative and if the fuse blew then I knew for some instances that the section that's responsible for the di uh, for the for a section that's responsible for um, stopping the feedback loop between the negative and the positive rail is short right so think about it if, if you've got this diode that's supposed to be stopping the voltage going backwards into positive and negative rails um, if the voltage is coming this way and it's stopping it from going back that way into the negative rails or whatsoever then if you apply power these fuses didn't blow I mean though it's a 40 amp fuse it didn't blow so that tells me that this section is fine so it must be something in this this side of the section um, not so much the the power section but so much of the um, audio output section yeah so if if it was to short these fuses out then yes I know that it's somewhere in the in the power section but still that doesn't give me enough information to rule out the um, the audio section so I think this section here the section here is your power section so I think I think that that will be fine um, though let's let's just check that just to be sure anyway so let's uh, let's grab our multimeter um, let me how am I gonna position you okay so let's let's position you guys there and maybe there so I'm just going to go into the the ohms mode so short my leads out and then let's let's check from this di uh, this resistor to this resistor I get 46.6 I think that's a 47 ohm resistor yep so 47.5 so plus or minus 10 percent 47 let's have a look here so that checks out fine yep same thing there yeah so that's I'm pretty confident that this section is is your power section and I'm pretty sure this section is not responsible for what way the protection light is on so let's uh, let's eliminate that for now this rod is pushed through for some reason but let's uh, let's let's move on to this section here so let's uh, let's have a look on this side here so so let's flip this and uh, let's uh, have a look at these so if I can get you some zoom okay and I'm just gonna test so this section here is the the fits Okay, so the fits come through the legs or on this side. So we've got our multimeter. Okay. And I'll just position you on the, the diode mode. Yep. So let's let's test from this okay to this. Okay, I, sh I should see some sort of a voltage. I shouldn't see a short. Okay, so there's 0 0.8. Okay, 0 0.6 junction there. Uh, same thing here. And respectively, across all of them, it should be the same same voltage. Yes, yeah, so. Okay. Um, same thing here. One of them has a common common rail. Okay. I should just charge. Yep. Same thing here. Okay, and then this way to here. Yep. Um, same thing here. Okay, that's. Yep. Okay. Yep. So those those fits there are fine. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this board over, and we're going to look at the audio section, right? So 
this side where these uh, audio chips are so this side here okay and on the back side of it I'm gonna have a look at uh, what's uh, what's going on so same test um, I'm just looking for a short um, across the, the the gate or the drain or the source um, I'm just looking at the shorts so again multimeter hope you can see that yeah and what I'm doing is that's my fits there and I'm going from there okay so straight away whoops okay so as soon as I place my leads onto there I get a short so whichever way it is it's still getting a short um, let's check the next one I wonder if you guys can see that. Okay. And then... So that one's okay. That one's okay. It's okay. It's alright. And then the last one. Yeah, so... We had a short here the short here okay so here okay so these two I'm just gonna put a mark on that um, so I think I'll just grab a marker so this one here and this one here are my two culprits okay and then let's flip this over and let's have a look okay okay all right so it was it was this two yep so those two now what i'm going to do is i will remove those two from the circuit. Let's get some light. Okay, I'm just going to remove these two from the circuit and I'm just going to test it out. So, because I'm not sure why it's beeping, is it because it's in circuit or is it because it's actually shorted and that's our problem? So, let's grab my soldering iron. Um, to enable this to be removed a little bit easier we apply solder to these pins yeah and you can either just use a solder sucker and remove this or you can just heat up all of the pins at the same time and it will just drop through yeah, so I might just do that. I might grab, oops, let's just grab that like so, and and just ever so lightly. Where are we? Yeah, just heat up all of the pins just like that with a little bit of pressure. Yeah, just like that, and it'll come out. So let's put that one aside. Okay, and let's clean the section up. Always good to have a good soldering iron and a good solder sucker or can do this probably with solder wick as well so let's let's grab let's put our board away okay and let's let's test this let's see 
What's going on with this? Let's put that there. Yeah, okay. So same thing, diet mode. Um, let's actually flip this. Yeah, and then positively in the middle, there and there. So you notice how this one's not showing any signs of a short. Yeah, so we go through that and then we change leads. Okay. Okay, so that's see how we just get a voltage reading there. So that tells me that this this transistor package is good. So what I'm gonna do now is I will place this aside. So I know that one's good. Okay, and I will remove the second one. So I'm not gonna if you're wondering why I'm not putting it back into the back into the board is because that becomes my reference. So there's that there's the old one yeah so that's my reference now to have a look at if the rest of this is exactly how that's going to be so again if you're doing this at home and you're finding it difficult to pull this out just use a pair of needle nose pliers and just apply heat to all of these pins just like that and it'll come out yeah so let's do that Let's clean this out. We could do this process later on, but since the board is warm, might as well do that. Okay, so let's get rid of the board. Bring my two packages here. Okay, zoom me out a little bit. Okay, so hopefully you can see that without. leave this light on for you yeah so again I'm on the diode mode diode scale yeah and I'm looking at this junction here yeah and it's getting me so the negative is in the middle and the positive is on this side and it's getting me 3.80 0 0 0.380 voltage just trying to get this out of the way. Yep. And so if we if we do if we repeat that test, so from that pin to this pin, okay, we get 0 0.48 uh, 0 0.488, and to this nothing. So if we repeat that on this one, let's see where we get. Okay. So you notice that that's a short. Okay. There's a short as well. Okay. So this transistor package is a short yeah so now now we need to identify what's the number on this so the number on this one is b 31 n 20 d okay and I think yep so both of them are the same I don't know if you can see that. Yep, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the the old one out and I'm gonna solder in the previous one. Yeah, so we took it out of here. Okay, and I'm just gonna tack that just in there. Okay, with a little bit of solder okay so let's just to hold that in there yeah and then I'll flip this down apply a bit of flux to that and then just resolder this one back in and then I'm gonna look for another short So that's that's okay. And now again grab my multimeter. Okay. 
and just going again across all of these pins to see if these are short. Remember before we were getting a short, same thing here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, same thing here. I'm just briefly looking for a short. Um, this one, this one. Okay, it's nothing. That one there, that one there. Okay, so we're getting a, a junction, which is good, but we're not getting a short, um, which is good. So now I need to go ahead and find this B31N20D fit transistor, whatever you want to call it. And let's, uh, let's review or restart the video from there. So give me a couple of seconds. Let me find this and we will return back. Okay, so we are back. So remember that's the blown fit, which was B31N20D. If you can see that. Yep. I couldn't find the exact one. But I did find this one here, which is FB31N20D. So I had to pull this out of another board um, that I had laying around. Um, and looking at the data sheets, so every time you're pulling FETs and transistors apart, you need to be absolutely sure about the data sheet, the voltage, um, the working voltage, the peak voltage, um, the threshold, the amps. Um, the millisecond change rates and so forth so you need to match that up with the data sheet so if you can't find the exact one find one that's close enough equivalent and match up the ratings of the amps the voltage and the working threshold voltage and so forth and then you can match it up so I'm pretty sure this is close enough to what that is because I can't find this anywhere um, so I'm going to replace this one back into the board so we'll go ahead and do that we have the section here so again I am just I will have to put some thermal heat paste on it so again I am just placing it just like that and just gonna grab my solder a little bit and just apply onto that just so it holds it yeah okay that's pretty good and just apply some flux to this junction here okay just make sure you hold the solder there for a little bit longer just so it gets through to the other side yeah and then let's come in with the uh, acetone brush and just brush away from the board Yeah, so now let's test for that short again. Okay, so again, we're in the we're in the diode, okay, we're in the diode scale mode. Yep, and let's test for a short. Okay, we get a good junction there. We swap the leads. Okay, that's good. Let's test this one. Okay, great. So we're getting a good. That's the one that we replaced. So we're getting a good reading there. So no more shorts. There, to there, to there, there, to there. Reverse, yep. Same thing from here, and then 
Yep, so I'm happy with that. So now comes the moment of truth. When we plug everything up, and can we get a light back on? So that's the that's the one that doesn't have a all of this um, heat sink paste on it. So that's the one we replaced. And yep. So let's let's plug this up. Um, and see if we can get that light to come on. Alright, so we're good to go. Um, we've got our connections made. Alright, power packs plugged in. And let's uh, let's view this LED here. Let's see what it's doing. Let's apply some power, protection light, protection light. I think we're on we're in green light. So let's turn this light off. Yep, so we're in we're in green light. Okay, so let's do that one more time. Okay, so let's turn that off. Wait for it to discharge. Okay, and then let's plug that in again. Okay, here we go. All right, so back online. Cool. So the next test is um, let's turn this off. So the next test is to plug some RCAs in, plug some um, speaker leads, plug it up to a speaker, and then let's uh, let's join from there. Okay, so we've got, I couldn't find a woofer, so I just had to um, use this speaker that I had laying around. Um, it's 4 ohms, I'm not sure it's that, if that's the correct one, but that's fine. Um, and I have on this side, these connections just go into my computer, and it's just playing a song. So it's, it's pretty much replicating how it would work in a car. So let's plug some power in, and there's the red light. And Okay, so let's turn this up, see if it's working. There we go. Obviously there's no music coming through it because this is a mono amp, so okay, turn this up. okay, so I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with that um, that it's working. Um and I don't want to run this for too long because obviously these fits need to cool down or a heat sink over it. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to disconnect the power now and um, put this back into the uh, original casing and then reassemble everything, test it one more time, test it again and then hand it back to the customer. So bear with me while I assemble everything and then I will put it back together and I will meet you there. Okay, so we have everything plugged up, speaker, our inputs, power, let's get that to this, let's wait for this to turn on, yep, there you go, let's turn that up. Alright, so that's okay, so so inputs there and that's our green light right there. Okay. So all in all we can call this a successful repair. Uh, hopefully this video has helped somebody out there and thank you for watching.